It's just 8 a.m. in the village of Saranac Lake, and the temperature's already rising. I brought an extra one. On the edge of town, Charlotte Demers from the Adirondack Ecological Center, along with a group of students and local volunteers, are setting out early to beat the heat. Um, it's about a quarter mile across the railroad tracks. They're conducting a bio blitz. So a bio blitz is an attempt to survey the diversity of life in a fixed period of time. In this case, 48 hours. Usually it's either 24 hours or 48 hours. So the idea is it's an intensive, rapid survey where you grab as much of that diversity as possible with a wide team of experts. To do this, Charlotte and her team came out the night before and laid down a series of traps along a transect, just a fancy word for line, along this bog, and another series of traps in a grid pattern in the nearby woods. 21, not sprung. Did we do 19? They're hoping to catch an animal they're calling a paramiscus. You don't want to be losing any traps. The name sounds exotic until you see one. The door shut and something's in here. And the simplest way to see what you got is use a simple plastic bag, pop him out. Here. No worries for the wear. And they've got a lot of fur behind their head. So you just kind of can grab them and scruff them. So this is a little deer mouse. We were talking about how the hairs on the deer mouse go past where the cartilage ends. Not much of a return, just one mouse in 25 traps, but it's a start. A quick check between the legs, it's a boy. A check for the log, and then it's back to the bog for the mouse and into the woods for the team. No harm done. The way that the BioBlitz works is through these taxonomic working groups. And these are teams of experts focusing on different species of flora and fauna. Nobody can know everything. And often these are the experts in that field in the region. We're very fortunate in that regard. They provide the expertise. So those, those teams help us in figuring out, well, how should we sample? Where should we sample? When should we sample? And then the general public can join up with those, those teams and going out into the field and doing that sampling. And so it's sort of almost like a, a, a menu from a restaurant. You can choose to go and look at dragonflies and then choose to go and look at amphibians. But if you do, make sure you bring some shoes you don't mind getting muddy. Angelina Ross from New York DEC is hunting for frogs and salamanders near the same bog. They're good indicators of ecosystem health. You know, they have permeable skin and contaminants can, can get in there. And so, you know, like wood frogs and spotted salamanders are really good indicators of ecosystem health. And you know you have a pretty clean wetland if you have those two species. The prolonged dry weather this summer isn't helping the survey. This type of situation isn't really ideal. You know, it's not moist at all. There's not really good contact with the ground with this log. So I guess once you flip it, you find that out. Not surprising that there's nothing under there. Their prospects quickly improve when they move to a swampy area near the rail bed. They quickly uncover more than a half dozen species in just a few dozen yards. The team members report each of their discoveries with a hint of friendly competition. Can you put down, I found wood frog metamorphs and adults all along here. There's no place for names. Let's not argue on film. <laughs> Prospects have improved for Charlotte Demers team in the woods as well. It's shaping up to be an eventful day for the Blitz. You go. You cannot monitor change in the future if you don't know where you are right now. So that's a part of what we're doing today. This is a real scientific enterprise. This is not just a feel-good exercise. The data that I'm, I'm entering as we go along here will be the, the baseline for future monitoring. It'll be used by our supporting and partner organizations that are the, the people on the ground making decisions, driving conservation and management policy here. So whether it's scruffing a red-backed bull or charming a red-bellied snake, the BioBlitz has something for everyone at every age. Oh, this is what the Adirondacks is all about. It's nature, the creatures of nature, how they interact, how they fit in, and uh, why it's such a wonderful place to live. I also believe that this is uh, uh, a manifestation of the Creator's greatness with the, the sheer diversity of the life forms and organisms that are out here. And you never know when a discovery may pop up okay. right under your feet.
You know, one of the things that we're really conscious of is not everybody is capable or has the time to go and hike a mountain trail. And so we wanted to have some events here at the library that would give people that hands-on feel. Glenn Johnson from SUNY Potsdam brought down a number of, of, of um, amphibians and reptiles. Hands-on, it gives the kids a chance to get up close to these animals, to, you know, to interact with them. And that, that really is a valuable experience. If we have a single person that walked in today and you know, maybe it's had a passion, but has never found that outlet for it. You know, let's say it's a, a younger child, and you give them that seed. And I remember this in my own experience, you know, when I was younger, the people that take the time to work with you and say, look, you know, you're not crazy for being interested in dragonflies. It's not a weird thing to do. It's a, it's a neat thing to do. Here are the tools you need. Here's a network of people that will support you in that endeavor. And you can make a career out of this, or you can, you can have this can be something, a source of enjoyment throughout your life.